welcome to this uh, new discussion on this uh, remote sensing essential course which is image enhancement techniques one. Uh, some of the slides uh, which you might see are being repeated here, but uh, it was essential uh, to have those slides again and we will have now discussion because we have seen some demonstration and we have also seen some image enhancement technique, color space and other things. So, now we can understand these things in much better way and uh, therefore, this repetition might be there of the slides, but not the content or discussion part. As you know that after image acquisition, the main uh, focus here is now image processing. Ultimately, we are interested in feature extraction through classification and uh, then we go for accuracy assessments also. Now, image quality, uh, when we say image quality, there are many aspects in it. Uh, not only the noise which is present in the data in the uh, previous uh, demonstration of the software of the DIPS, digital image processing uh, simulator, we have seen two types of noises. One is complete line, be, line being dropped and another noise which we saw in our data in that example data was a salt and pepper kind of that one pixel is having 0 value, the next pixel in the same line is having 255 value and likewise you are having. You know uh, these are electronic devices though before launching, putting on the satellite and launching all kinds of test, testing goes on. But uh, sometimes uh, because of uh, when they are in a space, then the environment is completely different than what you are having on earth. And therefore, sometimes because of some other reasons, they may go bad and may start giving some data. Sometimes these noises are not permanent, only for few scenes, few days, you are having noises in the data, errors in the data and later on it is corrected also. But sometimes say, it does not happen. I remember a scenario, especially it happens in case of thermal infrared channels that uh, when it is overpassing a very high temperature feature of the ground like for example, over a volcano, it is very high temperature values and, uh, and that uh, the sensor it, uh, you know itself saturates for some time and it start giving noise after that. And uh, once it cool down after some time, it, it starts again functioning well. So, the, it is not necessary that uh, these sensors will have noise errors permanently. Sometimes these errors comes and goes that is why they are put in sometimes in the non-systematic errors and sometimes systematic errors. Since that systematic errors are easier and rather easier to remove them and routines can be developed, softwares can be developed and these can be uh, removed. But uh, non-systematic errors some uh, have to be dealt separately, completely separately. So, when we say image quality, the quality data uh, that means say uh, it is uh, not only the accuracy part uh, that may come through uh, either uh, geomet uh, geographic uh, or georeferencing or geometric uh, corrections or that might be because of noise or less noise in the data or high quality data or distortions introduced by the atmosphere that is the biggest problem in the remote sensing data. And so, these kind of uh, if these are less and then uh, there may not be and there then we can expect a high quality accurate remote sensing data. I also in the previous discussion one day I told you that uh, uh, there are chances that uh, in a very highly polluted uh, environment atmospheric conditions uh, one, once there is a rain uh, and uh, then suddenly things becomes very clear and if that time the data has been acquired by a overpassing satellite, then that image is very, very clean generally because all these atmospheric constituents for time being have been settled because of rain and the sky is clear. So, then things in the atmosphere is clear and then we get a very high quality data from even the same sensor which was earlier giving uh, uh, you know the poor quality data. So, sometimes this uh, these are not permanent, sometimes these keep changing. And uh, the environment uh, or the atmosphere between sensor and earth plays very, very important role 
there are scattering phenomena, there are absorption phenomena, clouds, water droplets, gases, which creates a, a absorption, reflection, scattering in different part of EM spectrum and may create uh, noises. And random or systematic malfunctions are there, random are difficult and uh, sometimes for example, uncalibrated detector creates striping. Generally, it, it used to happen in earlier sensor technology, but now uh, these calibrations have improved very significantly and it is not very common now to see these stripping effects. But anytime the some, uh, some uh, sensors within a array uh, can go bad and then you start seeing the stripping. So everything is not uh, all the time uh, reliable in that sense. Uh, also be when we uh, discuss about pre-processing of the remote sensing data and uh, then uh, there might be some errors might be introduced at during that stage also. So like uh, for example, uh, because uh, uh, sometimes the images are converted initially from analog to digital format conversion and there might be some error introduced during that time. And these all uh, and few more things affects the image quality. So, if almost all these things have been removed, then the image becomes of very high quality, but it is not so easy to do it. Again, this uh, is uh, this part we have already seen these, these slides, but uh, as I said that uh, whenever you are looking for uh, quality image, uh, how you can assess that image is having quality is by going through the histogram. If the distribution is a normal distribution, a Gaussian distribution well saved throughout uh, the dynamic range, say 8 bit scenario 0 to 255, five, if that is there, then definitely that image seems to be of very high quality. But if you get other scenarios which are shown like this one or this one or this one or this one, then uh, maybe, maybe the image is not of very high quality. So, one has to and see the histogram is not direct indi indicator of the quality, but the distribution of pixel values uh, on this by scale uh, between 0 to 255 can tell something about the quality. Also the position of uh, median, mode and mean will also give you some indications about the quality of an image where they are concentrated. Like for example, uh, here negatively skewed distribution we are seeing. Here we are seeing the positively skewed distribution. So, the pixel values because of absorption or scattering uh, the pixel values are shifting uh, where they should not have been and they are changing the position. It is not a, a normal distribution and uh, we can guess that probably image quality is not good. So, we expect no, most of the time we expect that uh, there, there should be a a normal proper distribution and the position of mean, median and mode in uh, this histogram should be in uh, uh, like in the first example, but it is not necessary all the time. Though image can have the quality uh, data, but uh, still the histogram may be different. So, it is not the sole indicator of image quality, there are some other parameters on which image quality is assessed. Now, uh, how to Mm, uh, you know accurately represent these images once we get the data in a pre-processing stage. Today uh, in the uh, in the our morning hours or in uh, previous uh, uh, previous to previous discussions we had uh, about discussion about geometric corrections that come under the image pre-processing step which we have already discussed. As you know that uh, better and accurate the georeferencing is done and that uh, will be better in further processing or further utilization of that image or data sets. So, uh, the geometric corrections or georeferencing plays very, very important role in remote sensing as well as in GIS. So, while uh, when one is doing these things, uh, one has to take all care uh, so that we achieve a very good uh, georeferencing. There might be some question that when we say the georeferencing is very good. So, the, that root mean square error, the sum of root mean square error which we discussed in the georeferencing discussion should be within pixel. 
So, if uh, if your uh, uh, spatial resolution of the satellite image on which you are performing georeferencing is having uh, 10 meter spatial resolution, then your uh, 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 the root, uh, sum of root mean square RMS should be less than 10. If you can achieve uh, by iteration process that uh, you identify uh, GCPs and uh, you find that it is giving high error, you delete it, recollect it, change the location, again identify a new GCP and if keep doing and spend some time one and uh, collect more GCPs than minimum required, then probably you can achieve a high georeferencing uh, within one pixel. And within of course, pixel is the unit of an image, you, it is indivisible, you cannot see inside, you cannot do anything. So, within one pixel, if the root mean square error, sum of root mean square error is coming like that, then it is very good georeferencing, can be considered as a, a very standard one. So, while doing a geometric corrections or georeferencing, utmost care must be done because that image will be used later on with other data sets which are also georeferenced. And if there are some mismatches, wrong geometric corrections have been done, wrong georeferencing has been done, then you may end up with wrong results. Because uh, error propagates in uh, digital image processing as well, like in GIS. So, one has to uh, control these errors so that results are, results remain highly reliable. Another thing is radiometric corrections. Radiometric correction generally are not done by the user, these are done by the agencies who acquire the data and they know that uh, how the different sensors in an area are working, which one is under performing, which is over performing and that they you know they correct the images and uh, doing the radiometric correction. But uh, again uh, we, as a user and especially when you are going to use these images for uh, quantitative analysis. For qualitative analysis, uh, one may still, uh, you know, um, give less uh, emphasis on radiometric or atmospheric corrections. But if somebody is going for uh, quantitative analysis, then one must know that whether radiometric corrections have been performed on your input images or not. Similarly, atmospheric corrections have been performed or not that we have also uh, seen earlier. And uh, this uh, makes a uh, uh, they say uh, easier uh, the image announcement and then of course uh, once uh, you have improved the quality of an image by going through these processes and plus some enhancement and then uh, you, the image becomes much more interpretable, much more uh, usable. And uh, uh, as also uh, you know sometimes we ourselves may not be having capabilities or only for in a certain project we require once or twice the images, then uh, uh, ourselves may not be doing corrections and enhancement. We can ask the supplying agency like in India NDC of NRSA uh, to do these corrections, do the georeferencing, do the uh, radiometric correction, do the atmospheric correction and give the product to us. Of course, that product uh, or uh, is going to be very expensive, but nonetheless uh, uh, such things can also be done by the uh, rectifications, of course, uh, uh, remove distortions and uh, um, either because of platform movement I, due to might be sensor, earth rotation or atmospheric uh, distortions. So, as far as possible, all these errors must be removed before we go for any quantitative or qualitative analysis. Especially, I am talking about uh, quantitative analysis. Uh, De-stripping, noise removal, we have just seen the demonstration uh, in that through the DIP software. So, very quickly, I will go that radiometric corrections uh, or de-stripping is done like here. Uh, the line which we saw was horizontal in the software. Here, the stripes are in the vertical direction, but the technique would be same that adjacent pixels average value is taken and given to that and drop line and you get a corrected image. Though if uh, the uh, we would not have the uh, stripping effect, then the image would be different completely than what we are seeing here. But since we do not have any choice, we have to use that data and therefore, uh, by this uh, 
adjacent uh, pixels average and replacing with that uh, drop pixel uh, can solve our problem for certain applications. But if I, I am to use this uh, say right image for some quantitative analysis, then probably uh, that will not be a good approach to have. So, images which are uh, which have been corrected uh, because of de-stripping or noise uh, should not be uh, considered for a serious quantitative analysis. So, this uh, drop line or defective data line scanning may be a problem and these values can be replaced. Uh, noise I have also that uh, salt and pepper noise which this is what you are seeing here. Salt pepper noise has been removed and uh, it is uh, more or less is a manual method, a surgical kind of method and uh, it is done like this because we do not know whether it is a, a real object or it is a noise. So, um, that is why uh, manually it can be done. And uh, these uh, speckle noise or salt and paper noise you generally see in the radar data, but there are different processing steps, filtering techniques are there by which uh, these uh, noises can be removed. So, that we are uh, not here discussing uh, when we will come on the radar data, microwave data, then we will be discussing. Atmospheric corrections we have already uh, discussed and have uh, done a separate treatment. Uh, main two problems in atmosphere is scattering and absorptions and these uh, uh, can uh, be a sometimes can be uh, you know can change the quality of an image uh, very badly um, because of these phenomena. Uh, but uh, uh, you know the choosing the right image especially of right season of a particular location is very very important. And generally what we do? If for serious applications, we first try to think uh, what kind of uh, which is the best time of the year for a particular application. So, suppose if I have to identify uh, some vegetation and uh, I want uh, that atmospheric effects, especially scattering and absorption, should be minimum, and then say we say like month of uh, February or March in India especially in central India or in south India can be very good months to acquire the remote sensing data. There you will get good discrimination between vegetation and other objects and these effects uh, scattering and absorption effects are um, generally minimum during those months. But contrary to this if I go and acquire the data of uh, say May or June or in northern part maybe of November when lot of uh, this uh, a burning is taking place of, uh, after this paddy crop, then there will be lot of uh, absorption uh, phenomena and uh, maybe scattering also and uh, your image quality is going to be very, very bad. So, choosing a right season that will depend on the location is very, very important. So, date of the scene one has to be very careful if there is a choice. If there is a choice that I can choose an image of any time of the year knowing very well that this is my target. So, as I told you that if I am working on vegetation part and I do not want uh, just after the post monsoon because uh, post, just post monsoon you may have a very healthy vegetation. So, I want to discriminate between healthy vegetation and less healthy vegetation then maybe January, February, March when the sky is clear less scattering and absorption effects are there, I may go for that. No clouds generally at that time also. So, uh, you know choosing a right time for image uh, acquisition is very, very important. Uh, and because nowadays uh, all uh, this uh, one can assess also by uh, uh, himself. Uh, if you go in the Google Earth and you may find the uh, for a particular location images are available of different season. And you would find say if I give you example of uh, central India or south India and in month of January, February you will find images are very, very clear. And when images are clear then we can uh, say that they are having good image quality. And when images are not clear like in northern India in month of November lot of pollution absorption scattering is happening or in during fox season then 
one should not use those images for serious applications. So, these are the things one have to remember. Important thing is uh, these are the things which are not mentioned in generally in books or manuals or by the software and these things you learn only through your experience. So, uh, because you cannot avoid atmosphere that will be there, but uh, you can for a particular location you can assess uh, through some other data sets then when this scattering and absorptions are minimum for that particular area and uh, uh, like from uh, either from meteorology department or some other uh, sources. And once you are sure that uh, this these months are better for me, then acquire the image of those months. And those, those images would be of high quality and if you produce certain results, they would be also of very high quality. So, this one has to remember uh, because we cannot get rid of atmosphere, but uh, we can definitely acquire the images of that particular time when atmospheric distortions are minimum for that location. That is in our hand and that we can do it. After uh, you know that uh, if possible uh, then uh, you, you still you can perform atmospheric corrections even on those images which are as per initial assessment of, of good quality. Uh, so, if, uh, if that is done then still images can be improved. Uh, haze uh, is a another problem in northern part of India uh, because of pollution and dust particles and other things. So, again if I if I see a uh, lot of uh, you know previews of uh, from these uh, supplier side I and the uh, same time I see the uh, rainfall data I can know that when rain has occurred and just after that if I get an image I may not be seeing much haze in the uh, satellite image that is the image one should acquire. So, just after the rain if possible when clouds are less image is very clear atmosphere is and uh, distortions are minimum that is the time to acquire the image or take the image or buy the image download the image of that particular time. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, through that uh, software also DIPS software I have also demonstrated and through simple linear contrast stretch that how image can be improved and uh, what goes in the background and uh, the, the example which we took is the linear contrast stretch and uh, the calculation very simple calculation goes on behind the scene though in that software it is not in behind it is in the front. Uh, we will be in future discussions we will be also discussing now uh, filter a special filtering also edge enhancement. So, in a special filtering a high pass filters, low pass filters or directional filters we will be discussing. Also, we will be discussing Fourier uh, analysis and other things in, uh, in enhance, made enhancement too or some special filtering techniques also. Uh, in the DIP uh, softwares I stopped in the previous uh, discussion I stopped when and uh, the filtering thing came. So, now when we will be discussing filtering I will be also showing through that software. When we go for a special filtering what kind of modifications in the pixel values goes on that you can and that you can see through that demonstration of that particular software. So, whoever is uh, interested for image enhancement techniques and uh, would like to learn the inside of image enhancement image processing the best thing first thing download that uh, DIPS software and uh, since it is not commercial. So, I can repeat many times and uh, request you to download install on your machine and then try to uh, you know learn the things maximum from that software. It will give you a real good understanding we are also regularly using in our classes as well. Now, multi image uh, uh, multi spectral image manipulations when we will go and the same also through the DIPS we will be seeing uh, band ratioing principal component uh, of course digital and there are various uh, vegetation indices which might not be through that software. As we have seen in that uh, uh, software uh, that how pixel values are enhanced or changed uh, when we choose the linear contrast stretch now you can realize that uh, how it is done 
And because uh, when we use the full dynamic range, then the contrast in the image is automatically increased as shown here and also uh, so to you through that uh, software. Here in this example, the values were between 84 and 153, these, has, these had been stretched to full range that is 0 to 255 and original image was having a low contrast and uh, uh, this is having high contrast. Now, interpretability uses of this image is much more higher. So, simple linear contrast stretch sometimes works very well. And there are some other uh, uh, linear contrast, uh, you know, the same, uh, same way I am showing here and uh, that uh, here the values are between 0 to 158 and when you go for contrast stretch, the 60 values goes to 0, 158 goes to 0 and rest are spread there. This is histogram equalization that we will be also seeing. So, in histogram equalization, wherever the more frequency of pixels are there, they are more spread is there likewise. Uh, these uh, slides uh, we have already seen, so I am not going to spend much time here, but uh, you can realize that uh, what goes in the background when we choose these uh, stretching uh, steps or routines and uh, what kind of improvement uh, we can bring in our images. Histogram equalization uh, can create a large contrast in your image compared to simple linear contrast. But uh, which one would be best for your image for of that particular location of that particular day, nobody can tell. So, uh, this is a really uh, one has to uh, judiciously choose a right uh, contrast stretch uh, routine or uh, you know tool and then do it and try and see and assess how, uh, how best uh, the results are there. And if it is not there, you go back to original image, do the another way of uh, stretching because there is no standard that every image has to be linearly uh, contrast stretch, no. Uh, there is a, nobody can say that every image has to be histogram equalized, no. It depends on the image, it depends on the contrast which is present in the image. Is ima if suppose you get an image which is already having distribution of pixel values in 8 bit scenario between 0 to 255, then you do not have much uh, space for contrast stretching or any kind of stretching, but uh, still you can perform, you can uh, still improve the contrast, uh, but uh, uh, not much space is left. But if it, you are having a narrow distribution of pixel values, that means your image is having very poor contrast, then definitely any of these contrasts will improve your image very significantly. So, uh, you know choosing a correct uh, 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 contrast stretching technique or maybe histogram equalization or non-linear contrast stretching is up to the image which you are it depends on the input image basically. So, this brings to the end of uh, uh, this discussion and uh, uh, definitely uh, two main points uh, I have mentioned here. One is uh, that uh, choosing a right time for image or right date for the image that is very, very important and second day choosing a right uh, contrast enhancement technique for your image. Both are, uh, both will depend on your judgment. Uh, depending on the local area and the location of which you are working and accordingly you would choose a right date for your image, right season for your image and also accordingly you would choose a right stretching technique. So, this brings to end of this discussion. Thank you very much.